How do you support a friend through a terribly tough time? I just saw a great example of how to do this, what it looks like when it's done right, and I bet you have done the exact opposite more than once. Drew Lynch is one of my favorite comedians. Maybe you saw him on America's Got Talent or maybe you've seen his videos on YouTube. Years ago, he won a golden buzzer on America's Got Talent. And part of the reason was because he was so funny despite dealing with a stutter that seemed absolutely debilitating. He made fun of the stutter and also the circumstances under which he got it. He was not born with it, but he turned it into comedy gold. Well, apparently in the last week, unfortunately, Drew Lynch's stutter returned and it came back with a vengeance. But to his credit, he talked about it in a YouTube video that he just posted today. That's my big issue is just a feeling anxiety for everybody else in the room. That's my, uh, that, that is where I, that is what this is about. I know that that, I, I know that that's what this is about. This is about me trying to compensate for other people feeling a certain way and me trying to control it and I can't control it. A week ago, he was performing in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and he sounded just fine. I parked my car so close. My, <laughs> my car is touching the building. I, I wanted, I don't never want to be outside. <laughs> but here's the thing, even though this stutter has come back and he's dealing with it and he can barely string a sentence together, he still went on stage and did his comedy set anyway. It's been a good week and, uh, in that, um, my stutter has been a f***ing asshole. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't really necessarily get to control it all the time, but right now it's just like, uh, it's like exorcism style. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, no refund, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, they should have put this on the ticket, dude. Uh, uh, maybe there's people here who have never seen me before, and this is the first time. <laughs> uh, uh, it's never like this, but, it, but anyway, sorry. Uh, I can't imagine the drive home for a lot of you. And we just watched a dude for an hour who was cold. What the fuck? Uh, just watched some guy who was like, uh, don't let go, Rose. <laughs> Now, before you get upset and you're like, Joshua, why are you making fun of this guy who stutters? His stutter was a fundamental part of his comedy when he began to rise to prominence. So he has opened that door and the audience is laughing with him. When I was 20, I was, I was, I was playing shortstop on a softball team and, 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 and a grounder got hit my way and actually blunted me in, in, in the throat from which I'd fallen and hit my head. And that day I had a minor vocal contusion with a major c c concussion. And I went home that day and went to sleep on the concussion, which, 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 which you are not supposed to do. And then I woke up the next day and so mm, mm, uh, now I have a, a career. Um, <laughs> So it's easy to see why people wanted to support him at this performance when he was deep into a debilitating stutter, which he says actually is painful to try to suppress. If he tries to hold it in place or just get through the sentence and power right through it, it's physically painful for him. If you watch this video that he just posted on YouTube of him trying to get through the performance, at the end of it, he kind of apologizes to the audience for how everything has gone that evening. I just want to say, uh, I usually, uh, I've, I've stayed after shows for 10 years to say hi to people, but tonight I'm, I'm going through it. Um, so I want to tell you that from the bottom of my heart, I want to tell you, from the bottom of my heart, I don't know how long this goes for, but I just want to say, I'm glad you guys stuck with me through it because it's, uh, you know, it's a very vulnerable thing, but I want to just say, uh, Cleveland's always been a beautiful place and so nice to me. So thank you guys very much. We love you. Now that reaction might not surprise you, right? What else are they gonna do? Mock him, heckle him, be nasty to him from the audience? No, he fought his way through a show. He did it, you know, life sucks sometimes. We all know that life sucks. You just, you get through it. And if you can get through it, like people respect that. So of course that's how they're gonna respond, right? No, 
Actually, no. Think about what happens when you're in trouble and the people around you try to pull you out of your mess. Now, sometimes that'll work. But what do you do if you can't be pulled out? What do you do in those moments when there is no solution, when all you can do is just endure it? A lot of people are really, really bad at dealing with that. You ever see that video on YouTube that's posted by a group called the RSA, where they take the audio of Brene Brown talking about what empathy means? I think that Drew Lynch and his encounter with that audience, their reaction to him, is a perfect example of what Brene Brown is talking about, and it is exactly why some people make me so damn mad when they're trying to get me through a tough situation and they don't realize they're just making it worse. They don't understand what empathy actually looks like. I always think of empathy as this kind of sacred space when someone's kind of in a deep hole and they shout out from the bottom and they say, I'm stuck, it's dark, I'm overwhelmed. And then we look and we say, hey, and climb down. I know what it's like down here, and you're not alone. Sympathy is, ooh, <laughs> it's bad, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, you want a sandwich? <laughs> um, empathy is a choice, and it's a vulnerable choice, because in order to connect with you, I have to connect with something in myself that knows that feeling. Rarely, if ever, does an empathic response begin with at least. We're trying to put the silver lining around it. So I had a miscarriage. Oh, at least you know you can get pregnant. I think my marriage is falling apart. At least you have a marriage. I'm going through a debilitating stutter in the middle of a stand-up comedy show, and comedy is my whole career. At least you have a career. I can't bear to look at the reflection of my own powerlessness on your face. So rather than try to adapt myself, I'm gonna to try to paint over your face with a solution instead of the reflection of what the problem feels like to me. Sounds mighty self-centered when I put it like that, right? Fortunately, there is a better way that works and Brene Brown talks about that too. I'd rather you say, I don't even know what to say right now, I'm just so glad you told me. Because the truth is, rarely can a response make something better. What makes something better is connection. Exactly. It's when we connect over a bad situation that the situation begins to get better. That's why it was so powerful to see those people cheering for Drew Lynch when he was struggling. They were with him. And in that situation, help was just going, man, if you're willing to laugh at this, we will laugh at it with you. I've reached out to people who know me, who love me, who care about me, who I sincerely believe are invested in my success. And instead of getting empathy, I get sympathy. Instead of getting, oh my gosh, that's, that's really tough. I don't know what to say, but thank you for telling me. I'm here for you. I get, well, why don't you do this? Well, why don't you try that? Well, maybe this would help. Well, you know, if you would give this opportunity a, a chance to work, then maybe you could do this. Or maybe you just need to get a piece of paper out and write out some options and then figure out the strengths and weaknesses and the opportunities and the threats of all of them. Or maybe you should just make kind of a diagram. You can do like an impact opportunity diagram and maybe you can just figure out some different ways to go about it. I bet I know somebody who's got a book that you can read. There was this book that I read and I think on page 98, there was this example of something. And I'm like, hey, 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 hey! <sighs> shut up. That's when I shut down. That's when I say, you know what? Not only do I not have help, but I don't have anyone who is capable of helping. Now I have two problems. Thanks. Are you willing to risk the residual emotion of that brokenness, of that pain, of that rejection, of that shame, of that loss, of that grief? Are you willing to relive those feelings long enough for that person to know they're not alone? Can you risk that emotionally for a few minutes if it means helping someone else out? Here's another word for it if empathy feels a little too woo-woo for you. Solidarity. That's what it means to stand in solidarity with someone. I don't need to know exactly what you're going through to know that you're going through it and to respect your struggle. That's what solidarity is. That's what that audience did for Drew Lynch. They went with him. They sat through the uncomfortable parts. They laughed when the jokes were funny, and some of them really were. That whole Titanic reference was really funny. But they just bore with him. Sympathy is insulting. 
solidarity is uplifting. I don't know how to pull you back up, but I'm here to shine a light in the darkness until you find your way. I think the world, especially right now, needs a lot more people like that. What do you think? Am I right? Am I wrong? Has this happened to you? Have you found certain ways or tips or tricks or techniques to help stand in solidarity with other people, especially when there is no solution? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Until then, I appreciate you making time for this. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And please, my friends, wherever you are, whatever the circumstances are, and especially if you can't fix them, keep on shining. Because someone like me needs your light right now. <laughs>